You don't know what you're talking about. Get your facts straight before you start posting videos. This guy is fake. Don't believe a word he says. These are some of the comments that I've received from my Facebook posts, from government employees and others. Other comments are too harsh to mention on this channel. Hi, I'm Devon Naika, a specialist for government employees seeking clarity on whether to retire or resign. And maybe you've seen some of my posts on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram and other social media platforms. And this content is always aimed at educating government employees like yourself so that you can make better decisions with your finances. However, from time to time, there are members who share these kind of comments. And how do you know whether these comments are justified, whether they are coming from another financial advisor, or whether it's a member who hasn't really researched the content, or someone who's had a bad experience with their financial advisor and thinks that all financial advisors are only interested in, in themselves. Now, if you're a government employee who is serious about growing your wealth and protecting your legacy, make sure that you stay tuned until the end because I'll be sharing with you three secrets I feel is most beneficial when you're watching all my videos. Now, I first want you to understand what's my personal standpoint. And I'm illustrating it here as the first step because there are one point, approximately 1 1.2 million government employees, right? Somewhere in that region. And it's a big number. Uh, it's very difficult for anyone uh, inside our, our world, in essence. You're always going to have people who like you, and you're always going to have people who don't like you. If you have a look at our religious leaders, for example, every single one of them had people who loved them and people who had nasty things to say. Likewise, the same that happens here. You have situations inside of social media or all of these platforms where you'd have a mixed reaction, right? You'd have a group of people who enjoy the content and a group of people who don't. And it's the same that would apply to me. I'm human. I've learned to embrace this. I would be doing the best that I can for all of my YouTube videos, but it doesn't necessarily mean that every single government employee is going to appreciate them or find them valuable. So what's my standpoint is this. They are, one point, they are approximately 1.2 million members that are sitting inside of uh, our government. And assume I can add value to 1%, right? Now, again, maybe you've seen the testimonials on my YouTube channel, or maybe you, you've heard stories of the tax that I've saved for members, or how I've been able to give them clarity in terms of which decision is better to retire or resign. That my, my goal is to empower as many members as possible. And this is why I love the YouTube videos, because it's free. It can be circulated amongst all members. However, if I'm able to impact someone, right? And let's say I'm able to impact you, just one individual. For me, that is fulfilling because I'm able to benefit you. Maybe I'm able to help you save a fortune in tax, right? Maybe I'm able to get, help you get clarity on your choice. Which route is better, right? Retiring or resigning. Maybe I'm going to help you to protect your legacy. And whatever it is, I'm doing something which I know is adding some kind of value to someone else. Remember the whole purpose that I started, or the whole reason that I started my journey is the challenges that my dad had faced. You know, he didn't have access to this information. It wasn't readily available. And as a result, it cost him a fortune. And I know what a difficult life we had growing up and how different it would have been if my dad just had access to this kind of knowledge. So let's assume out of 1.2 million people, I'm only able to help 1%, right? Like a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the people, right? 1% of them. That's still 12,000 people. And for me, that would be extremely fulfilling because 12,000 is a huge number of South Africans to assist, you know, on my own. Uh, it's a people that I know I can do the absolute best for. I can spend my time doing the tax planning, show them how to keep the taxes to its minimum, help them to ensure that they basically never run out of money. And any of the other concerns, right? I, I give myself the ability to ensure that I'm doing my very best for them. So I don't necessarily have to work with every single government employee. I mean, then I'm going to be oversaturated, right? I'm not going to be able to offer my best. So when I understand my, my, my standpoint, it's to ensure that the videos that go out there are not convincing you how good I am as a planner or convincing you to retire or convincing you to resign. You know, that's a decision that you must make on your own. The videos I have are more about empowering you. It's more about shifting beliefs, right? If you have a belief right now, hey, I can't save on tax or I have to pay the tax. My video is about showing you, hey, listen, it is possible. 
And then when you and I connect on a one-on-one, -on -one, I go into this deep dive, right? So understand my standpoint, if I'm able to help just 1%, I will sleep better at night, right? Knowing that there are people out there who I've been able to help. Now, the second thing I want you to be aware of is be aware of stereotypes, right? And I'm going to use some examples here on government employees because, you know, obviously I meet with them every single day and I know some of the challenges that they face. So let's say you are a police officer, you, you know, working part of SAPS, you're doing the absolute best that you can do, honest and ethical, right? There are some people who would appreciate that in, in our country. And then you have the others, stereotypes, right? Where they paint everyone with the same brush, right? They would say basically all police officers are corrupt. You know, all police officers are not getting their work done properly, you see? So beware of stereotypes. It might not necessarily be that you are in that way, but you know, isn't it frustrating if you get painted with the same brush? Or for that matter, let's say you're an educator. You know, you, you're doing the best that you can. Now remember, keep in mind, you have some educators who are passionate, like, you know, doing it with the absolute awe, right? putting in late hours, doing the absolute best that they can. And then you have some educators who are doing it more from the income perspective, okay? And obviously, there would be a difference between the two in terms of the results that the students may acquire. Now, again, sometimes you may have parents who have this feeling that all educators are in a certain way. You know, all educators are fortunate because they finish work at a certain time, because they can't see the amount of extra time that you're putting in afterwards. Now, again, this is why I say beware of stereotypes. Same happens inside of my profession, you know, with financial advisors, financial planners. You know, maybe you've had an experience with a financial advisor or planner where you lost money. It doesn't mean that every you're going to lose money with every single financial advisor or planner, right? It just means you've had an unfortunate experience. But it does mean that you've made some mistakes and now you can empower yourself because going forward, you don't have to repeat those mistakes. Or this is how I see it, right? Sometimes you might have had a financial advisor who is not skilled for example, with the government employees. And because they don't understand the nature of the pension fund or they don't understand exactly how to do the planning or the tax planning or the pre-98, it might have resulted in members losing money. It doesn't mean that all financial advisors, all financial planners are not good. It's just a bad experience for that member. But again, this is what the entire channel that I have is designed to do. It's empowerment for you so you avoid making these mistakes that others are making. Now, what's the tech? next thing I want to recommend for you is test the experience, right? You know, they have this saying, the proof is in the pudding, right? So when you test the experience, you now close your mind to the noise out there, right? You close your mind to the noise out there. You're sitting with, for example, you're booking a one-on-one -on -one with me, right? Now, I can go through the exact tax calculations with you. I can go through the tax guide. I can analyze what are the things that are important for you. What are your goals? You know, are you wanting to protect your legacy? Is that something that's important for you? Are you concerned about medical aid? Are you concerned about cap need? But you also, when you connect with me on a one-on-one -on -one experience and you're testing the experience, it doesn't mean that you're definitely gonna partner with me, right? It just puts you in a position where you have an experience with me. Maybe you've met with other financial advisors or planners, and I would encourage that, right? Like you meet, multiple advisors, planners, and then you reach out to me and then we go through, right? So when you're sitting down, you then can put yourself in a position where you are comparing the experience, you're testing to see amongst different planners what's that experience like, right? Who's genuinely interested in you, helping you to ensure that you're saving on tax, helping you to ensure that you make the most, the best decision for yourself. But not just that, who's competent to carry on with this work, right? Who's got a proven track record for doing this, right? So when you understand it from that perspective and you test the experience, it's, in my view, a low risk way for you to get a better understanding before you make a commitment of choosing the, the financial planner. And you would know, right? You would know in your heart from your first experience, if it's someone that you connect to, you know, if it's someone who is explaining things that's in a way that's easy for you to understand, or it's just information that you don't understand altogether, right? It just doesn't make any sense to you you would know off the bat of what experience is gonna be best for you. So, quick recap on the items that you wanna be mindful of. Uh, when it comes to seeing the comments from members or anyone inside of social media for myself and my videos, 
understand my standpoint. My focus is to ensure I deliver the most amount of value. And I use YouTube because again, it's a free platform. It's my way that I could do these, you know, even though it costs me time and money to, to create the videos, it's my way of making sure that I'm helping as many people as possible, right? So understand my standpoint. I do want to focus on helping every single government employee, but when I'm connecting one-on-one, -on -one, you know, if I'm able to help just one individual, if I'm able to just help you, I'm going to be happy because then I know that I've been able to make a big difference for you, right? Second thing is beware of stereotypes. And again, third thing ties in well with the second point because you want to test the experience, right? You get a feel, you, you can connect with me or other financial planners, and then you'll know who's genuinely interested and who's not really focused on helping you connect the right solution. That's it for this video. Again, as always, I hope that you found it helpful. If you have not already subscribed, I want to encourage you to hit that subscribe button because when you do, the video starts showing up for other government employees. And then it just makes it easier for us as a community to grow and expand together. I will see you in the next video.